To designate the R and S configuration of our chiral centers, first we're going to look for a heteroatom. Remember, a heteroatom is anything other than carbon and hydrogen. Then I'm going to look for a carbon that is bonded to a heteroatom. That's the number two priority. And then I'm going to look for a carbon and then see how many hydrogens does it have bonded. The more hydrogens it has, the less likely it is to be bonded to something else. Then I'm going to go down the chain and find the point of difference. Okay, so we're going to work a lot of examples for this because this takes practice. So for number one, number one, this is a 2-bromobutane. So my CIP priority is bromine is number one. It is a heteroatom. Now remember there is a carbon at every end and bend. So this is a CH2, this is a CH3, and this is a CH3. So with my priority set here, I have a CH2 is greater than a CH3. That means this is going to be number two, and this is going to be number three. With hydrogen held to the rear, I rotate around clockwise, so this is an R configuration. So this would be R, 2-bromobutane. For number two, this is also a 2-bromobutane. Butane. But what is the configuration? Bromine gets one, the ethyl side is number two, and the methyl side is number three. Immediately we can see that we are going to rotate clockwise, except hydrogen is coming out towards us this time. So there are a couple of ways we can go about this. You can either memorize the rules that when hydrogen is to the rear, turning to the right is an R, and when hydrogen is coming out towards us, turning to the right is an S, or you can put yourself behind the molecule and watch it rotate clockwise, or you can make the asymmetric center. So this is an S configuration. So this is S to bromobutane. For number three, we also have a butane, and this time we have an amine. So we have, let's see, our heteroatom is CIP priority number one, the ethyl side is going to be CIP priority number two because the CH2 is greater than the CH3. Okay, so I'm using that rule. Hydrogen is coming out towards us. So although we are rotating clockwise with hydrogen coming out towards us, this is an S configuration. For number four, again, our bromine is CIP priority number one. So now we have a carbon that has a heteroatom. That heteroatom is oxygen. So number two is over here on the left, and number three is over here on the right. We are rotating counterclockwise, so this is an S configuration. For number five, we're looking at this is our chiral center. So number one, our, our CIP priority number one is our heteroatom. So now we need to look and see uh, about our carbons. So this is a CH2, and this is a CH. I know there's only one H because there are three bonds showing, and the H is implied. CH has a greater priority than CH2. That means this one is number two, and this one is number three. We rotate to the clockwise, to the right, so this is an R configuration. For number six, we have number one, CIP priority one for the oxygen. Let's see, I have carbon with a heteroatom for number two, and then I have a C, not a CH, but a C for number three. I am rotating counterclockwise to the left. Hydrogen is to the rear. That means this is an S configuration. For number seven, CIP priority number one is the oxygen. The hydrogen is in the rear. It is CIP priority number four. It's going to stay there. And here I have a CH2. Here I just have a C. C has a greater priority than CH2. That means this side is number two, priority number two, and this side is priority number three. I am rotating clockwise. That makes this an R configuration. Number eight. I have oxygen as carbon as priority number one. Here I have carbon with a heteroatom, so number two is to the right, and then I have a carbon here. This is priority number three. 
The number four priority is the hydrogen, and it is pushed to the rear. This rotates to the right, or clockwise, so this is an R configuration. Number nine, oxygen is priority number one. Hydrogen is priority number four, and it's to the rear. That makes it a little bit easier for us. And over here, I have a CH2, and I have a CH. This CH here, remember there are three bonds showing here. So the CH has a higher priority, it's going to be number two, than the CH2. That means we are going to rotate, let me write that a little bit differently. We will rotate counterclockwise, that makes this an S configuration. Number 10, the bromine is CIP number one. And this time I have a carbon, a carbon, and two OHs. This does not have a chiral center. This is not an asymmetric center because it, has, it doesn't have four different groups. It has a CH2OH on both sides. So number 10 has no chiral center. Number 11, again, we have these two ethoxy groups. Therefore, there is no chiral center here. So there is no RRS to name. Number 12, I have an oxygen with a cyclohexane ring. I have an oxygen with an ethyl. I have a methyl and I have a hydrogen. So how do I decide which is number one? The hydrogen is going to be number four and it's to the rear. Well, now I'm going to look, here's oxygen. I need to look for my atom of difference. So this is a CH and here this is a CH2. So immediately we have an atom of difference. So CH being greater than CH2, this becomes CIP priority number one. This is number two, and methyl is number three. That means we are rotating counterclockwise with H to the rear. That makes this an S configuration. So now let's look at number 13. We have an N and an O. They're both heteroatoms. We need to go with the heavier heteroatom for number one. So oxygen is going to be number one. That makes nitrogen number two, methyl number three. Hydrogen is pushed to the rear. This is counterclockwise, excuse me, this is clockwise. So this is an R. Here I have oxygen is number one, and I have two carbons with heteroatoms. We go to the heavier heteroatom for the higher priority. So this one is number two, and this one is number three. This one rotates counterclockwise. So this is an S configuration. For number 15, we have this oxygen is number one. And then which side do we have for number two? Well, this is a C. It's not a CH. This is also a C. What do we do now? Well, now we look for an atom of difference. So we have a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen. We would treat that as a carbon bonded to two oxygens and then another carbon. This carbon is bonded to an oxygen and two carbons. That means this side would be CIP number two because oxygen is heavier than carbon. So this is counterclockwise and that makes 15's asymmetric center an S configuration. Number 16, we have oxygen for number one, hydrogen for number four, we have a CH2 here, and we have a CH. CH is a higher priority than CH2. We rotate clockwise. That makes 16 an R configuration. Number 17, we have an oxygen. It's pushed to the rear here, but we have an oxygen. And then we have two uh, cyclopental rings. So one has a double bond and the other one doesn't. So we need to look for those atoms of difference. Well, one, two, three, four, this is a C. There are no H's, but this one has an H. So using this rule here, this quick rule of thumb, that means the one with the double bond is going to be number two and the one that's only single bonded is number three. This rotates clockwise, but our H is pushed out to the front. So that makes this an S configuration. Number 18, we have a methyl group. We have an H, which is number four. 
We have one, two, three, a propyl group, and one, two, three, four, a butyl group. These are both CH2s. Here's another CH2. I'm looking for an atom of difference. Here's a CH2, and here's a CH3. This CH2 has a greater priority, again, using this rule here, has a greater priority than the CH3. That means my number one priority is to the left, number two is to the right, number three is the methyl group. That has us rotating counterclockwise, so no, number 18's asymmetric center is an S configuration. For number 19, we have a couple of different chiral centers. We actually have two chiral centers here. And I want to point out first that this one is not a chiral center. It shows some stereochemistry here, but there are two methyl groups because there are two methyl groups that does not fit our definition. So we are not going to assign an R and S here because of the two methyl groups. So here I'm going to work on this one first. So N is going to be number one. Number two, we have a carbon with a heteroatom. So this is going to be number two. And here is going to be number three with four pushed to the rear. Now here we have a hydrogen that's number four. I'm sorry, we have a methyl group that's number four rather than a hydrogen, but it's still number four. So with the amine containing uh, asymmetric center, we are going to rotate clockwise. Yeah, boy, I had to think about that one. Clockwise, so this one is an R. I'm going to write it under here. This asymmetric center, we start with oxygen being one. And then this carbon versus this carbon, we have to look for an atom of difference because neither of them have a hydrogen. So being double bonded to an oxygen is, be, is like being single bonded to two oxygens. So here I have a carbon bonded to an oxygen, but here I have a carbon bonded to a nitrogen. The carbon outweighs the nitrogen, so this is gonna be number two. That makes this number three. Number four in this case is a hydrogen. It's pushed to the rear. So when we go counterclockwise, that makes this asymmetric center an S. So we have an S for the alcohol containing asymmetric center and an R for the amine containing asymmetric center. Number 20. I'm going to start with this asymmetric center, and we start with a 1 for our O, or our oxygen, our OH, our alcohol, and we have a 4 for this hydrogen. Now, our rule number 2 up here, carbon with heteroatom, we have two of those. This carbon has a heteroatom, it's an oxygen. This carbon has a heteroatom, it's a nitrogen. So because oxygen is heavier than nitrogen, that makes this side CIP priority number 2, and this side is CIP priority number three. So we're going to rotate clockwise. So that makes this an R configuration. Clockwise rotation with H to the rear or our number four to the rear makes this an R configuration. Now for this asymmetric center, our number four is going to be our methyl group. Number one is going to be our OH, our alcohol group. So using our rules here, we've uh, taking care of the heteroatom, we need a carbon with a heteroatom next. That makes this two, and that makes this three. We don't actually need the carbon with the heteroatom. It just makes it easier when we can follow these rules. So we rotate this one counterclockwise. So this asymmetric center, since number four is pushed to the rear, rotating counterclockwise, that makes this an S configuration. Number 21, H, is number four. BR is going to be number one. That makes this side number two and this side number three. So you're going to have to put yourself in the right orientation or, or draw it differently. So if I take the mirror image of this, and this is where your model kit may become uh, very helpful. And I said mirror image, but that's not going to help us any. So you have to imagine looking at this this way. Bromine is going to be number one. This part of the molecule is going to be number two. The methyl group is going to be number three, and then the hydrogen is going to be number four. So again, if I'm looking at it this way, and I'm turning one, two, three this way, then that makes this an R 
configuration. Now for number 22, We have a carbon with a header atom. I'm going to call that number one, our CIP priority number one. Hydrogen is number four. So this business on the rest of the molecule is CH2. This is going to be CIP number two. And here the methyl group is CIP number three. It's always helpful when number four is pushed to the rear. So we are going to rotate counterclockwise. That makes this one, or this asymmetric center, I hope I said counterclockwise there. That makes this asymmetric center an S. Here I have nitrogen is number one. Hydrogen is number four. Again, pushed to the rear. That makes it very helpful. Here I have a CH2. This is, also, this is a CH. So CH is heavier than a CH2. So we would call this number two and this number three. We're going to rotate counterclockwise. And... That will make this an S configuration as well. This asymmetric center, again, hydrogen is number four. We have a carbon with a nitrogen. We have a carbon with an oxygen. So the oxygen is going to win out because it's heavier. So this is going to be priority number one. The carbon with the nitrogen is priority number two. And then the methyl group is number three. This rotates clockwise with hydrogen to the rear which makes this asymmetric center an R. Here on number 23, the nitrogen is first. The hydrogen is number four. The CH over here, that's going to be a number two. And then our methyl group is going to be priority number three. Now you have to kind of, you have to look at this coming up through this way and see that it rotates around. You have to push that hydrogen to the rear. Again, having your uh, model kit would likely help. This rotates clockwise. This is an R configuration. Number 24, we have H, which is our number four. I'm gonna work on this one here, this asymmetric center. So we have a CH2, we have a CH3, we have a CH2. So I'm working with number three on my priority list here. Then I have a CH3, I'm walking down the chain, and here's a CH2. Here's my atom of difference, so the CH2 is going to be heaviest. So I'm going to say the right side of the molecule is number one for this asymmetric center, the left side is number two, and then the methyl group is number three. That rotates clockwise for number 24, so this asymmetric center is an R. Here on this asymmetric center, I'm going to start with number one at the OH. The H is number four. The, basically, the rest of the molecule is number two, and then the methyl group is number three. This is another one of those where you have to put yourself in the position or make the model, and you have to look at it here and see that it's rotating this way or counterclockwise, so that makes this and S configuration. Number 25, so I'm looking here first, and I have two methyl groups, and because I have two methyl groups on this carbon, that is not a chiral center. Same with this one, not a chiral center because we have two methyl groups. So at number 25, there's nothing to name other than the actual name of the molecule, which we could do real quick. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be 2,6-dimethylheptane, and there is no stereochemistry to name. Number 26, however, this is not a chiral center for the same reason. This is a methyl group, and here's a methyl group, so it's not a chiral center. This one is. So the OH gets priority number one, the H gets priority number four, the bulk of the molecule gets priority number two, and then the methyl group gets priority number three. So you have to look at this, you have to push H to the rear, and you have to look at it kind of like, well, I guess this way might be the best way. And so we, we are rotating this way, and when H is to the rear, this is an R configuration. For number 27, again, following the same rules, OH is number one, 
four is assigned to the hydrogen to the rear. It's always helpful when it's to the rear. And here, this carbon does not have any hydrogens. This one does. This is going to be priority number two. It's going to be greater than this side. We Hydrogen to the rear, I am uh, rotating counterclockwise. This is an S configuration. Number 28. So OH is number one, H is number four. So which side is do I call number two and which side is number three? This is a CH2, this is a CH2. This is a CH2, this is a CH, CH with a heteroatom. So the right side is going to be number two priority and the left side is going to be the number three priority. So I am rotating clockwise, but H is coming out towards me. So that makes this asymmetric center an S. For this asymmetric center, the chlorine is priority number one. And again, we have to go down the line here. CH2, CH2, find the atom of difference. The atom of difference is here. So this becomes priority number two, and this becomes priority number three. We rotate counterclockwise, but since H is coming out towards me, this is an R configuration. Here, at this asymmetric center, hydrogen is number four. Here, this is a carbon with no hydrogens, and this one has two of them. So we're going to say this is priority number one on this side, two on this side, and three is the methyl group. We rotate clockwise. That makes this an R configuration. And number 30. Now, number 30 looks awfully hairy. So let's just take it stepwise. We're going to start at the top where the H is to the rear. So the oxygen on the right gets priority number one. The majority of the molecule here is going to be number two, and then this is gonna be number three. We rotate counterclockwise with, um, I called that counterclockwise. This is clockwise. So the top one with H to the rear is an R. I'm just going to go around clockwise. Hopefully that'll help me remember which way is which. So I'm looking at this, this asymmetric center. Now I have an oxygen with a hydrogen and I have an oxygen with a carbon. The oxygen with a carbon is going to be number one. Oxygen with a hydrogen is going to be number two. And then the rest of the molecule is going to be number three. So this one rotates clockwise with H to the rear. So that makes this an R asymmetric center. At the bottom here, we have OH to the rear, so that's going to be number one. H is coming out towards us. That is number four. And now on either side, I have a carbon bonded to an OH and an H, so I need to go to the next atom of difference. The next atom of difference, I have an oxygen bonded here, and I have a carbon here. Oxygen is heavier than carbon, therefore this, is, this side is going to be number two, and this side is going to be number three. So that rotates counterclockwise, but hydrogen is coming out towards us. So we're backwards. So this is also an R configuration. For this asymmetric center, again, the oxygen is number one, the hydrogen to the rear is number four, and I just wrote a two. Now we have to decide which is going to be two and which is going to be three. So we have a carbon OHH, carbon OHH. Step down, we have a carbon with an H and a CH2. We have a carbon with an OH. That means that this side is going to be number two and this side is going to be number three because oxygen is heavier than carbon and that's the atom of difference. So we would rotate counterclockwise H to the rear, that makes this an S configuration. And the last asymmetric center here, H is coming out towards us, OH is to the rear. We look to the right, we have a CH. We look to the left, we also have a CH. But this CH also has an OH. This CH has a C. So this part is number two, and then this part is number three. We are rotating counterclockwise, but hydrogen is coming out towards us. You know what? I think I screwed that up, so I'm going to try that one one more time. 
This is an R. So with this asymmetric center, oxygen is number one. Let's look for that atom of difference. Here's a carbon with a hydrogen, a carbon, and an oxygen. This carbon has a hydrogen, a carbon, and an oxygen. Okay, this oxygen has a carbon. This oxygen has a hydrogen. That makes this side number two. I did. I screwed that one up. That makes this side number three. So we are rotating clockwise with hydrogen coming out towards us. That makes this one an S. So there you go.